Well, today, Virgin Airlines has taken the decision and chosen to enter into voluntary administration. It's a difficult day for Virgin's 10,000 employees. It's a difficult day for their customers. It's a difficult day indeed for their suppliers. There are many suppliers, in number about 6,000, and we acknowledge that. We recognise those people, and certainly I watched some of the heartfelt comments made by some of their baggage handlers, some of their cabin crew, and I feel for them. We really do. As a government, uh, we understand the complexity of this situation. We also understand that, uh, as Virgin has said, this is a way out to recapitalise. There is a path forward under voluntary administration to recapitalise and restructure their business, and this is important. Uh, we also acknowledge the fact that the federal government has provided so far during COVID-19 uh, more than $1.28 billion of assistance, a lot of which Virgin has been able to access. Virgin has been able to access the initial March 18 announcement where $715 million was put on the table uh, as way of uh, waiving fees when it comes to fuel excise, uh, Air Services Australia charges and such things as security screening. And uh, Virgin uh, CEO Paul Scurra told me that uh, Virgin has benefited to the tune of tens of millions of dollars because of that announcement and it's backdating to 1 February. And of course, uh, those fees continue to be uh, waived whilst uh, there are planes in the sky, and there are, and that is thanks to our March 28 announcement uh, when uh, I announced $198 million for regional air routes to be continued to the 138 centres across regional Australia, and Virgin Australia uh, flies to many of those destinations, and Virgin are taking part in those continued regional routes. And of course, uh, last week I announced $165 million to ensure that there is a domestic trunk route service in Australia. And of course, uh, Virgin are part of that too. And we thank them for that. We thank them for continuing to put planes in the sky to enable people to travel uh, between capital cities and to key regional destinations. Of course, the April 1 announcement where we, where we uh, decided that uh, there would be $110 million spent on freight assistance. And Virgin are taking part in that. And we thank them for that. And of course, the repatriation flights, uh, where we're getting uh, Australians who are abroad uh, for any number of reasons, either they're holidaying or they're visiting, or they indeed, uh, some of them live overseas, and uh, the Prime Minister has said that uh, they need to come home. Well, Virgin are helping take part in those repatriation flights, and we thank them for that. There is a way forward for Virgin, and of course, the JobKeeper payments, $130 billion uh, that the federal government is providing to keep people in jobs, to keep supporting jobs across all, all sectors, all industries, all businesses. Uh, Virgin can continue to participate in the JobKeeper through voluntary administration. Uh, we want to see a two airline sector coming out of COVID-19. It has been uh, a dreadful situation. We understand, we acknowledge that, and we want to see uh, Virgin come out the other side. Uh, Virgin have said that in their uh, statement this morning. Uh, we acknowledge it's a difficult day for Virgin. We will continue to work uh, with Virgin, uh, with the uh, voluntary administrators, uh, to get the best outcomes. I'd like the Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, to add to those remarks. Well, thank you, Deputy Prime Minister. As the Deputy Prime Minister just said, the Board of Virgin Australia has chosen to put the company into voluntary administration. This is not liquidation. This is not ANSET. This is not the end of the airline. Rather, as the company itself has said in its statement, this is an opportunity to recapitalise and for Virgin to come out stronger on the other side of the coronavirus crisis. Virgin Australia is a very good airline, performing a very important role. And this is a difficult day for its staff, for its suppliers, and for the aviation sector more broadly. But the government was not going to bail out five large foreign shareholders with deep pockets who together own 90 per cent of this airline. As the Deputy Prime Minister has said, we will continue to provide support as we have to the aviation sector. And the JobKeeper package 
will continue to be available to Virgin employees. The government's objective is to see two commercially viable airlines operating domestically in Australia. This will be good for jobs, it will be good for competition, it will be good for lower prices and it will be good for the Australian economy more broadly. Today we note the announcement by the company that the administrator will be Deloitte's. Well, today the government announces that Mr Nicholas Moore, the former CEO of Macquarie, someone very well experienced in commercial matters, will engage with the administrator on behalf of the government together with the Treasury and finance teams in support. Our objective is a market-led solution. Our objective is two commercially viable major domestic airlines operating in Australia. And we will work constructively with Deloitte's through Nicholas Moore and our Treasury and Finance teams from here. Authorised by Michael McCormack, the National Party Wagga Wagga.